Pro School. Uh, layer 1 Pro Schools are things like Ethereum, Cardano, Solana. These are all Layer 1 Pro Schools. But Radix is a Layer 1 Pro School specifically focused on decentralized finance. One of the biggest problems in decentralized finance right now is scalability. Like Ethereum is really expensive to use. Uh, and Radix has brought this incredible new way of scaling decentralized finance so that you don't ever have to worry about high gas fees again. And the other big problem that we're seeing a lot is hacks. There's like been over a billion and a half dollars of hacks that have happened in the last 18 months just from Ethereum. Uh, and that's really down to the programming language that people have to build DeFi using. So Solidity is the is the DeFi standard, right? Solidity was created by, by Ethereum, but it's not really fit for purpose. So what we did is we spent the last 18 months working with leading DeFi projects and Solidity developers to work out what a better language for building DeFi might look like. Because the biggest problem that we see outside of hacks is time to talent. Like we talk to we talk, we talk to leading projects and say, hey, what's your biggest problem? And they're like, Solidity developers, we can't find enough Solidity developers. So Scripto is this game changer in DeFi because it takes something like Uniswap from 10,000 lines of code to a couple of hundred lines. Of code. Simplifying it, bro. Massively simplifying. What do you see the biggest problem for the developers entering to the blockchain uh, area right now? I mean, there's such a big need of talent inside the blockchain sphere, and especially in, in project that you're talking with as well. It's understanding finance, right? Like finance is its own, its own very deep, complicated area of human endeavor, right? Like understanding what a derivative is, understanding what like a settlement is, understanding how money moves in financial systems and what, what the important actors are. The next thing that's difficult is understanding how to build with Solidity. So like Solidity is a programming language that was designed to be really easy to pick up, but doesn't understand finance at all. Like you, you, you think you can just say to Solidity, hey, I want to send a token from here to here. But Solidity doesn't understand what a token is. So you have all of this boilerplate that has to go in. And so building a financial application using Solidity is another level of really difficult abstraction again. And then the last thing is understanding what makes DeFi tick. So like, now I understand finance. Now I understand Solidity. Or how do I build a successful DeFi application? It's understanding how communities move and how, how uh, you need to think about liquidity and making sure that capital comes into your application. That's another level of complexity again. We don't help with understanding finance and we don't help with understanding DeFi, but what we do is we radically reduce the amount of time it takes to get to the point where you can build DeFi with crypto. How come there's more, more, more crypto companies exhibiting in the Web Summit? So, crypto is its own bubble, right? Like, it, it sort of moves around around the world without trying to reach out outside of its bubble because when, every time it reaches out, it finds that, oh, I have to explain to you what Bitcoin is and like, that's really difficult. And like, you you have to, like, there's this concept everyone talks about in crypto of red pilling, right? Like red pilling crypto. And I think that, that crypto, there's so much capital and enthusiasm inside crypto that often it tends to be inward looking, especially when the market's going up. I think that's the wrong attitude because like for us to eat finance, for us to win the world over to crypto, you have to go to places like Web Summit. You have to go to places where the, the rest of the world is only just hearing about crypto and spend the time to help bring them up the curve because that's the only way that you increase the tax, the only way that you increase the total of available market for the rest of, for the rest of crypto. So I encourage more crypto companies to come to things like Web Summit um, because this is, this is where the world is. The world isn't in the crypto sphere, the world is outside of the crypto sphere, so this is where you guys need to be. But for now, it's nice because we're one of the few people here 
uh, and we get to, you know an amazing look at look at the number of people that we've got already coming and saying hi. So what's great. your what's your favorite crypto coin? Favorite crypto coin is Radix XRD, obviously. Yeah. What's your favorite other crypto coin? Favorite other crypto coin? I I'm, I haven't bought it yet, but I like Abracadabra money. I think that's really interesting. How do you feel about NFTs? I love the idea of NFTs. I hate the execution of them at the moment. I think that they are over over simple. They're too simple. They're at the 2007 stage of ICOs. Like, we now understand what a crypto asset is from a like a non-NFT point of view, but NFTs have still got a way to go. So I think we need another cycle before they start being really interesting. I don't want to buy a rock. Who wants to buy a rock? Lots of people want to buy a rock. Rocks are silly. Why are people buying rocks? What do you think the price of Bitcoin will be in one year, and do you care? Yes, I care. I think it will be in one year. I think it may be at 40,000 in one year. I think, but I think that in between that time, it's going to go to 120. What's the difference between what's the difference between crypto entrepreneurs and regular tech entrepreneurs? Risk tolerance. Like a crypto entrepreneur's risk tolerance is kind of in the insane category uh, and other tech entrepreneurs um, have a much low, lower uh, lower threshold for risk. Um, and how, ins how insane are you on a scale of 1 to 10? I, 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 I'm, I'm, uh, it depends. <laughs> it depends who's asking. I'm, I am, I'd say I'm a 7. How close are you to being a Bond villain? Uh, <laughs> I'm <only> joking. <laughs> the laugh says it all. <laughs> Thank you.